yeah so a lot of uh, uh it's an event and uh, and uh, basically the you know the, the kindness and and the rule under salahuddin you know you, you you say about kind of returning it back to its original state uh, and you know this was a question i was going to ask at the end, but maybe ask it now, and then we can go into kind of the third crusade and, and the of Salahuddin as the final two topics. Uh, but is is history repeating itself? Uh, what what we see today in in today's life is 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 history, and and what we learn during this period of of, of you know the hundred odd years of the Crusades is is history repeating itself? Do you think? Well, I think I think we'll, we're always going to see uh, events in history which resemble one another. We're always going to see that. Uh, it doesn't mean that there's this exact replication of those events. Times do change, people change, societies change, civilizations change, culture, politics, religions. These all these change, and of course, it means therefore that dynamics in those events change. Um, there's a beautiful verse in the Quran about, you know, about uh, Uhud, um, when Allah speaks about the fact that, of course, there was a difficult day of Uhud because there were some losses for the Muslims, and Allah says, وَتَلْكَ الْأَيَّامِ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ These are days that we alter between the people, we alter between the people, you know, and so sometimes it's for us, sometimes it's for them. That's kind of the pattern of of life, how it is. It's like. The day of uh, Uhud itself, when Abu Sufyan started saying that, um, you know, Abu Sufyan took a place and he started saying, he said, Ulu uh, Hubal, how great is Hubal, the god that they worship. And it's interesting that the Prophet said to Sahaba who were there, La uh, Tujibuhu, don't answer him. Don't answer him. And then Abu Sufyan said, Lana al Uzza. No, sorry, sorry, my mistake, my mistake, my mistake. Not like this. The Prophet the Abu Sufyan took the high place and said, uh, Afikum Muhammadan, is Muhammad with you? And the Prophet said, La Tujibu, don't answer him. Abu Bakr and Umar were there, yeah? He said then, uh, Afikum Abu Kuhafa, is Abu Bakr there with you? The Prophet says, La Tujibu, don't answer him. Then he said, Afikum Ibn Khattab, is Umar there with you? He said, La Tujibu, don't answer him. Then Abu Sufyan said, Ulu Hubal. How great is Hubal? And the Prophet said, Ajibuhu, now you answer him. You know. They said, So what should we say? He said, Say Allah A'la wa ajal. Allah is more high, more majestic than that. And then Abu Sufyan said, Lana al Uzza, la Uzza lakum, we have Uzza, our deity, you have no Uzza. And the Prophet said, Ajibuhu, now you answer him. They said, So what should we say? He said, Say Allah Mawlana la Mawla lakum, Allah is our Mawla, you have no Mawla. You know, and it's showing therefore the, the power of narrative is always in your hands. The Prophet is saying that you, the power is, the narrative is in your, our hands. We don't need to talk when we don't need to talk. And we'll talk when we need to talk. You know, <laughs> Allah is concerned and we have to talk. You know, it's beautiful as an example. But then of course, uh, you know, uh, when Abu Sufyan said that this is revenge for Badr, uh, the Sahaba said, uh, I think Umar said, but qatlana fil jannah wa qatlakum fil nar. Our dead are in heaven and your dead are in hell. And that's the difference here. And so, uh, you know, we're going to go, of course, through times and moments of unease and difficulty and, and tests and trials. And there's so much hadith about these things, of course, about some of them are end time events that we would have to go through as an ummah. Um, but I think that there are some obvious, there are obvious connections there because you have the occupation in that time, you have the occupation, of course, in this time as well. And the occupation, I think, in this time is more brutal than it was in that time, you know, because occupation in this time is based upon uh, kind of an ethnic cleansing, is based upon, uh, you know, a complete, you know, denial of almost existence. This is why you have a lot of othering and dehumanization of the Palestinians. In fact, my talk with with Professor Norman Filkensen was called the dehumanization of the Palestinians and how that mechanism, in fact, plays out in Israeli society. You really do have no empathy for the Palestinian people, except, of course, some of us who do good ones that we praise, even like the refuseniks, who are the IDF soldiers who refuse to serve in the West Bank. Uh, you know, and you can see, you know, good signs of empathy in, in people like that. And 
good humanitarian people who are also there. Um, and so I think that you know you'll see you'll see similarities and differences in in both examples. Um, the, the, I mean, you know, Crusaders, of course, were Christians, and in this case, these are people are Jews, primarily, of course, secular Jews. However, um, but I think for us as Muslims, we can take a great lesson in knowing that Salah Din and people like him had that great sense of concern and yearning uh, to always put the matter of the liberation of Al Quds at the forefront, to always inspire that teaching of of Fadail Al Quds and merits of Jerusalem, so people always remember why that city is important for us. That's something very important for all of us. So I think there's some connections we can obviously make in that sense. Great. May, may Allah restore the the great city um, back to, to its its golden days uh, as he did with, with the staff of Muslims.